All right, everybody, welcome to another community webinar here at Open Source Marketer. I'm your co-host, Charles McKeever, and I have on the line with me, Toff Ward. Say hello, Toff. Hello, hello. How's everybody doing tonight? I'm doing great. I don't know about you, but I am doing fantastic, man. I am excited about the topic that we have for tonight because I just absolutely love WordPress. Love, love, oh. love it. Love it. <laughs> Love and actually, one of the neat things um, I'm thoroughly stoked about is we are actually going to embark on a little project this year. We're actually going to take a hobby, and I say this a hobby, we ha actually are developing this hobby because we didn't have it before this. So we actually get to do you know double duty here and just have a lot of fun with this, is we are actually going to take a hobby and use it as a tangible example to walk you through the process, everything in the process of building and marketing your own online business. And we're going to actually use our hobby, our new found hobby, as the perfect little example for this. Oh. So I am thoroughly excited this year. Go ahead and tell them what it is. Oh, it's, it's winemaking. Wine. Yes, I could have gone with beer making, but it's winemaking. Yeah. Because it's because it's fun, and because at the end you have thirty bottles of wine in thirty days, <laughs> and that just sounds cool all by itself. So it was pretty neat. Yeah. Well, we won't have time to go through all of that tonight, of course, because uh, there's a, there is a lot to it, and uh, of course we we, we need the bottles of wine. We we, we want to shoot the video and show you the process of doing the, the bottles of wine and everything, but. But tonight we're gonna we are gonna talk about the foundational piece of that, which is going to be WordPress and how you're gonna set up that WordPress website for for your business, no matter what type of business you have, whether you have an offline business, whether you have an online uh, exclusively exclusive business, uh, whether you want to set up that project like we're gonna do with the wine making, uh, just it doesn't really matter. WordPress is so flexible. That you can set up for just about anything, but we're gonna we're gonna talk about it kind of from the business perspective tonight. So before we get into that, though, we got to do a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, you need to know that we are on the chat right now over at opensourcemarketer.com/chat, along with uh, actually a, a good number of other people who are already there. So so these are apparently. Uh, some of our friends, people who we know in the community who are accustomed to this, this format that we have, uh, they know that they need to be over at opensourcemarketer.com slash chat because what you're seeing on your screen or what you're hearing through your speakers is only half the conversation that's going on. You need to be over there at the chat lurking, looking at what's going on because as we go through these resources, we're going to pop some of that stuff into the chat. Uh, there's going to be questions that are going to be asked as we go along and we're going to put the answers in. Uh, as we as as possible. So uh, if you have a question, if you want to ask something, that will be your opportunity to pop it in the chat and get your question answered. We will kind of hold questions for the end if possible. Uh, we will try to answer some as we go along, and then we'll have a question and answer session at the end. So, uh, but do go over to opensourcemarketer.com/chat right now and join in on the fun. I'm there. He's there. Top there. Top I'm there. always I'm there. I'm there, so you need to be there too. Now, tonight we are recording this webinar. We record all of our webinars here at Open Source Market. That's just how we roll. We, we like to uh, capture these things so that we can go back and watch them later. Uh, not, not necessarily us go back and watch them later, but so that others can go back and watch them later. So just know that uh, you can kind of kick back and relax. Don't worry about you know feverishly trying to take notes. We are taking notes for you. And we will email out a link to the rebroadcast of this. So if uh, if we tend if we go to long tonight and you've got to go put the kids in bed or there's something that comes up the dog you know goes nuts, uh, you can always uh, watch the end of this. You know it's kind of like TiVo. Think of us think of us as your TiVo box. We're your we're your DVR. We record these things so you can watch them whenever you want. OSM DVR. I like that. <laughs> oh, I like it. I just came up with a new product. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's not all. We also, inside of Open Source Marketer, have 320 videos just like this where we record and uh, we record step by step how to do 
just about everything that you're going to need to do online. So WordPress is right there at the top of the list as one of the videos that is in the video library. And uh, that's the kind of service that we provide to our members because we want them to be able to take a question, ask it in the private forums, you know, be able to get a video response, but also be able to walk through the step-by-step -step on their own if they, if they want to and uh, get those things done that they need to be accomplished. So whether it's podcasting or Facebook marketing, or if they just need to know a little bit of basic HTML, uh, the, the, all the videos are there from, from end to end. So uh, just know that we have those videos available in the member library and uh, you can watch those anytime and they are a good resource for getting information that you need and, then we'll and if there is something in there that you're looking for and can't seem to find you are welcome to email us and we will either point you in the right direction or we will actually run out and create a video just for you of course it goes back into the library for everybody to watch so it's not really just for you but we will definitely make sure you're taken care of yeah absolutely yeah we have screen uh, recording video uh, software and we pop that stuff open whenever we need to walk through because we know that showing you how to do it is a whole lot easier than just saying here go go read this or or uh, you know, giving you a one-line answer we definitely want you to understand what you need to do how you need to do it and we want that to be very clear so uh, yeah so just know that that's available now tonight we are going to be talking about business uh, building businesses or, get my words right building business websites using WordPress now this is a uh, like I said this is a very exciting topic for us because we have used WordPress for uh, building static uh, informational sites we built blog platforms you know blog entire blogs out of them uh, we've built uh, membership sites with them. We've used it for affiliate sites. Uh, we've used it for campaign sites where uh, you do some offline marketing and you want to track uh, where people have come from and things like that. So WordPress is a very flexible tool that can be used for just about anything and it's so user-friendly and so easy to operate that it is definitely our tool of choice. But I don't want to still steal any of the thunder away from uh, Top tonight because I know he's going to be going through and taking us through this this magical land of WordPress. Uh, mainly because one, he is he knows WordPress inside and out, uh, and two, because he's he's a IT veteran. This guy has got a background of putting computers together, of installing um, uh, software, of writing programs. Uh, he used to work for a DOD contractor, uh, 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 and he knows how to do web development, project management. He was a corporate trainer for a while, so, so he's got a good grasp on how to explain things and how to walk us through uh, what, why WordPress is the tool that we should use for our business websites and uh, what the value is going to be there. Now, we're, we, he is going to share with you uh, near the uh, middle to the end of the presentation, we're going to look at the process that we use to actually establish business websites for ourselves and for our clients. So that will be the point where we will actually start breaking down, okay, these are the things that you need to consider when you are putting together this website. So, so pay close attention to what he's got to offer because he's going to be walking us through uh, a little bit of background information and then taking us right into the juice. So, so uh, Toph? Absolutely. Oh, and, and as a side note, yeah. Um, yeah, not everything stays in Vegas. Just <laughs> put that out there. It's supposed to. It just doesn't always. Yeah, the pink-haired lady, she was, she was cool. <laughs> she was a big woman. She could have shot put me through a wall. Oh, it's, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're, you're, you're fortunate that she, she didn't give you movies right there. <laughs> yes, she liked me. She was nice. Okay, we're going to talk about a brief overview, show you some examples of what all we're talking about because we, we really want you to understand the whole process. There are quite a few people who, even after they have, have done this over and over and over again, forget some of those simple steps along the way. Uh, and I'm not just talking about technical steps. I'm talking about the actual business steps of knowing what you're doing before you sit down and do the technical part. Because essentially, it's all about your business. Your business is first. The information is first. Your products and services are first. The technical is actually the easy part.
but we're going to get into that. And we're going to answer some of your questions as we start opening up those conversations. Okay, first and foremost, we've got quite a few people that I've actually had to go back to the beginning because they jumped in, built their website, and it just wasn't working for them. And I had to go back and ask a few questions such as, really, what is your purpose for this website? Oh, I just want a website. Well, hang on, hang on. <laughs> what is it you really want to accomplish? What are your business goals that you're really trying to you know, get across? Well, number one, this is a business website we're talking about. We're not talking about you know a hobby. Well, I, okay, it could be both. Actually, we're, our winemaking is going to be a hobby, and we're going to show you how to turn it into a business and make money. But the idea is you really you want to do some e-commerce here. Now, maybe you majority of your e-commerce is offline and your online e-commerce is more of a, a coupon sales or it's more of a membership or it's more or not necessarily selling widgets physical widgets online there's dozens of ways to actually conduct e-commerce and make money offline you know, online without actually selling a physical tangible widget so we want I want to make sure everybody understands that you know when you get online there are so many options that you know you gotta have to outline what is your message because you really want to deliver it and I don't I know we've we've run across a few people who they'll take I, I actually Charles has a great quote for this one if you give a dog one bone it grabs the bone boom it's just in seconds it knows exactly what to do it takes that action if you throw 12 bones out there, the dog's just going back and forth going, oh man, what? no, maybe this one, oh, okay, how about this one? Total confusion, doesn't know what to do. So in a lot of cases, you really want to make sure you're focused on what you're doing. You want to deliver your message, reinforce your brand, and in some cases, you are your brand. I mean, imagine celebrities or authors or you know, even a product line may you may be the brand, and so consequently, you need to completely reinforce that online. Not just throw a logo up there, but actually reinforce everything about the brand online. If you are actually publishing, or if you are actually have a widget or a product, even if it's a digital product, a download or a PDF or or something along those lines, that's somewhat what I call digital intangible. Uh, you're publishing. You need you need to have that there, and you need to have information about it. Because, and I, I say this to be nice, I'm a horrible consumer. I actually go and do research on vehicles before I buy them. Everything about the vehicle. Same thing with my house. Same thing with anything I buy. I had to go get a vacuum cleaner recently. I did tons of research, and the sites that actually had research out there to give me. Well, those are the ones that attracted my business because now I, I'm actually able to get valuable information from their website so I am 10 times more apt to go visit them in person and buy directly from them you know, from their vacuum store or online as well. So consequently, we really want to make sure you publish good information because that's actually going to attract people to your website over and over and over again. You also want to provide customer support after they purchase, and this is this is a huge flaw in quite a few businesses because they're in such a rush to get everything online that they don't ever actually think about what happens after the sale. Now, every person you ever sell your product or service to or introduce your site to is a potential salesperson. They are a cheerleader for your site or they're a bomb waiting to go off. So consequently, if you don't support someone who has a question about your product, you know, hey, I got it and something's flashing. Okay, what what does that mean? Well, if they can't get any support, then you're kind of dropping the ball. Now, with a website, you have the ability to do all of these quickly, easily, cheaply and make it look as though you are a 15 million dollar a month company. I mean, truly have a presence that far exceeds anything you actually have tangible. I mean, I, I know two guys 
who had a closet as their uh, their office space. But boy, you go to their website and you talk to them on the phone and you see, you know, just what they had accomplished online, you would have no clue it was two guys in a closet ever. So I want you to think about all of that before you actually get into the technical side. And I remember, you know, I was a programmer on the old technical side. So I understand exactly what this used to be and what it used to require. Anybody who had a website 10 years ago, I mean, it was it was literally pulling teeth. You, you had to be a programmer because you generally couldn't afford to get a on-staff programmer to just start programming all this stuff for you over and over and over again. Hey, I need you to, you know, change the price on something. Oh, okay. Well, that's a, you know, 10 hour change plus, you know, all these specific tools you have to have, you know, you don't need any of those anymore. It really is simple and easy. The cost used to be very, very high and the entry level was, was very difficult. I mean, I am a programmer. I know this. I started off when, you know, I had to have a specialized tool. I had to have, you know, you, you pull it down on FTP. Yeah, it, and that's assuming that, you know, you are using somebody else's server, which everybody kind of does nowadays. But back then, you ran your own server. So you had to be a server guy. And then you FTP to your server. You grab the information. You pull it down. You used a specialized tool like, you know, I've, I remember uh, front page 98. <laughs> yeah, I actually use that, and I still admit to that. <laughs> I don't know why, but I still admit to that. And then you graduate to all of these other tools that came out left, right, and sideways. But you really kind of had to have those specialized tools and the specialized knowledge, and you had to have someone who really understood what they were doing because it was very easy to mess things up. That's not the case anymore. Now, you basically have systems that handle this for you. Hosting companies, there are literally thousands upon thousands of them. And really and truly, you don't have to be a server admin anymore. You just use somebody else's system. And you put a content management system on their server. So now you don't even have to do any programming. You don't have to do any FTPing. You don't have to have any specialized knowledge or specialized tools. It's not difficult. It's not time consuming. All of this stuff is meant so that anyone anywhere with an internet connection and very little knowledge can make all of the changes themselves and not necessarily have to be beholden to a, you know, cadre of programmers who are you know at your beck and call for an astounding dollar figure per hour <laughs> you don't have to do that anymore but that's the beauty of having a content management system it does all of this for you now comes the fun part which content management system do you use I've used about 12 of them as a matter of fact one of those I built myself you know, I worked for a Department of Defense contractor. We weren't allowed to use any outside. We had to build it all from scratch. So I understand the nuts and the bolts. I understand exactly how everything fits together and why everything should fit together and how it works for the users. And my first priority when I built mine was I had to make it easy for the user. The person who's actually going to use this system needs to like it or it will not get used. And that's the number one issue. If they're not going to use it, well, then what good is it? WordPress, by far, and this is, don't just take my word, I, I implore you, go do the research. Every single, every single research paper I've ever seen always ranks WordPress number one in the user experience. Okay, that speaks volumes. That means that the community for WordPress has spent the time and the effort and lots and lots of brain power to make this easy and intuitive for the user because they're the ones using this, hence the word user. So consequently, we really don't need to make it programmer friendly. There's a lot of those. I've used multiples of those and honestly, I'm a programmer. I can do whatever I want to with any of these systems, but I can't necessarily make it easy for the user and that's where having WordPress 
totally changes the game. I can build something and hand it over to a user and my clients, my customers are just blindingly happy because now they have a system that they like using, they want to use, and they can update and maintain it themselves. Anything they want to do, they can do themselves. And this is where plugins and themes come in. You can change the look, you can change the feel, you can change what it does. All of this really is built in directly to WordPress. Now, I could have stopped with user experience because really and truly that's the bar that most people have to reach. If they don't like it, if they don't understand it, if the help isn't good, if it's not intuitive, yeah, okay, they're done. They're just going to walk away. They're not even going to think twice. They're not going to try it twice. It was unfriendly. It was not good. I just don't even want to go there. Okay. WordPress completely changes that. It is simple and friendly to use. It really is intuitive when you say, okay, well, how do I publish? Oh, wait, there's this bright blue publish button right here on the right, and it's the only thing that's like standing out, glaring at me, asking me to click on it. Okay, I'll click on the blue publish button, and wow, it published it. Cool, okay. That really makes life very, very easy. Maintenance. I, I've done server security patching. I've done all sorts of security updates. and It's nice when somebody else does it for you, and all you have to do is click a button. Well, it takes a lot of effort to make this easy little button. WordPress has done that for you. So now you get the easy button. All you got to click on is that upgrade. All you got to do is look at how they set up their system and you understand that maintenance for WordPress is probably one of the easiest systems to maintain I have ever seen. And they continually try to make it easier and easier. Now we've got examples that, you know, people who are completely non-technical. Here's a church iParent, you know, it's, it's a church group. These are not technical people. They're not intending to be technical people. They don't want to know code in any way, shape, or form. They just want a place that they can go take a look and see what are the upcoming events. What are the things I need to know about? How do I post some information to this? Who should I contact? How should I make this work? Oh, okay. They don't want to learn HTML. They don't want to learn FTP. They don't want to learn any of those nice little buzzword programmer ideas. No, 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 no. I can do Microsoft Word and I want to be able to log in and I want something that is that level of friendly so that I can get in and do what adds value to the site, which is add content. Me, you know, as a user programming, that's not where the value is. That's not where the, the value is in the content. It's in the conversation. It's in the interaction. It's what's going on on your website, not the technical back end. So consequently, you really need to have a system that makes things nice, friendly, and a cute little wrapped up package. But that's not the only thing that you need to be aware of. Like I said, I could have stopped at user experience, but I didn't. Because to me, and this is as a programmer, having something that is well supported means the difference between being down and not being down. Uh, I have ha had to install systems where they weren't necessarily as, as friendly as WordPress. And when something did break, it was like, okay, well, where do I go? How do I, how do I look? What do I, you know, there was no resources. There was no documentation. There was nobody there to help me. Now, in WordPress's case, it's not fixes you're going to worry about. It's going to be things like, ooh, I have this great out idea. I want to be able to do this, but, but I'm not quite sure what do I need to do to, to make this extra little cool feature happen. You know, I want this to scroll. I want this, you know, I want this to work like, like this, not like that. So, so how do I do that? I just, I want it blue instead of red. How do I, how do I do that? So really you're talking more about enhancements and things that, you know, I want to make this better, even better. WordPress has an incredible documentation system. Uh, they have a whole website devoted to it. It's called the Codex. Uh, Charles will toss it. Oh, yeah, it's already there. Way to go, Charles. The Codex, it's in the chat, by the way. Um, the Codex has anything you could ever want to know about WordPress. It's just totally documented right there for you, and it is updated on a 
day by hour by second by second. I mean, I kid you not, if you want 20 answers to any question about WordPress, the Codex has it. And they have a directory of resources. As a matter of fact, the directory of resources is actually built in to WordPress. So if you go to the plugins area and you click on, okay, I want to I want to add a new plugin for maybe a photo gallery or or maybe I want something really cool like you know logic that says if you're on page A, then this sparkly thing shows up, but not if you're on page B. Well, I need a resource for that. Click on the add new plugin and all of a sudden everything's built into your site not necessarily oh I gotta go somewhere else download it pull it over no 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 they have built it into WordPress and not only that they've actually vetted half of the guys I mean they're looking at the code to make sure that the things that you go directly to WordPress and grab even though it's third-party code it's been looked at um, in a lot of other cases, it's a wild, wild west. You go to you know another different CMS, and there really isn't a one central resource that has kind of already looked through things. So you're at the mercy of whatever somebody wanted to give to you. Not so with WordPress. WordPress has gone the extra mile. They really are trying to make this a better system. A good example of Scott Citron. He's really not a technical person. He's he's a copywriter. He's a very good writer, actually. Most of his clients are in like the legal or tax or accounting, you know, all those good CPAs and such. Well, he actually wanted the blog, but he also wanted a business website. He wanted to be able to maintain it himself. He doesn't I mean he doesn't want to necessarily have to bug somebody and say, Hey, can you change this? Can you no no? He wants the ability to do all of that himself and he wanted to know where can he get this help and he's been totally happy with the codex he's been totally happy with everything WordPress has given him oh by the way both of these sites the blog and his business site it's the exact same WordPress it's the exact same theme and it was tweaked one's three column one's two column one's got a different header I mean all of this is built into WordPress we're using the exact same pieces but yet putting together in slightly different ways, both for business purposes, which would be pages, and for blogging purchases, uh, pur purposes, which would be blog posts. So consequently, it has the capability for full business, or business only, or blog only, or both smooshed together. The option's more of what do you want, not can, what can WordPress do. WordPress is totally open and available. It is open source, actually. You are totally able to go in and do whatever you want to with it. And it lends itself with plugins and other features to do all of this stuff yourself. You're not limited in any way. Which brings me to flexibility. Now, when you think about most most older websites people say oh I want a photo gallery well they've actually got to go program this and they gotta go program that and well do you want this feature and you do want that feature okay all of that kinda of goes away you don't necessarily need custom programming they have something called a plugin and it is it is meant to be just like how you're reading it you take a functionality like a photo gallery plug it into core WordPress core WordPress does not come with a photo gallery actually it does but technically in a lot of cases you want the cool slideshows and things like that so rather than go for core WordPress you may actually want to go out and get something even fancier you know all the good fancy schmancy little features well that's just a plug-in it's just like a, a, an electrical socket where you just plug this extra feature and I need a toaster oh, you just plug that sucker in the system I was using before WordPress uh, Charles actually introduced me to WordPress because I was using a different one at the time and I thought it was just the best thing since sliced bread it's a content management system you log in you change your stuff and it's got 12 different features that you to choose from I mean you can use all 12 if you want to and you went 12 yeah, 12, 12 different features. Look at all. This is great. 12. I have 12 total features for this. 12. Yes, yes. Ahem. Come take a look here. 
Okay, yeah, 12 versus 12,000. Uh, I mean, let's do the math. <laughs> Which has more flexibility? Which has more, and by the way, this 12,000 figure, it keeps changing. Every time we do this presentation, we have to change that number because it is daily growing and growing and growing. I mean, it is just this huge, wonderful repository of different features because somebody inevitably says, you know what would be really cool? Oh, here, I'll go you know, program this and I'll go offer it for free up on WordPress. Or, you know, some of these guys spend, you know, a couple thousand hours programming these things. And so they will actually offer up commercial plugins. Commercial plugins being, I think the last one we bought was like, what, $40? I mean, we're not talking Microsoft Office level or Adobe Photoshop type of software. I mean, I had to go pay $1,200 for, you know, Photoshop. I mean, it's actually the whole CS Studio. But uh, when you start talking about cost of software and you see a plugin that does exactly what you want for $40, okay, that's just a no brainer for your business. It just, totally changes the scope of what software costs. I pay $40 and I get exactly what my website wants. Maybe it's $99. Maybe it's it's something else. I mean, maybe I maybe just maybe I want an entire membership site that people can log in, take classes, have a personal private area just for their class, their instructors, their you know material just for their class in their location, or maybe they want to purchase a specific package or maybe a membership they could log into and now they can change what they purchase by wholesale, retail, whatever you want to. All of this is built in to WordPress as just little plug-in modules. So for next to nothing on cost when you think of how much does it cost to start a business. This is so on the low end in dollars, it's ridiculous. So you can actually have all of this put together for an extremely low cost. You can do it yourself and you have the option to do just about anything. So far I haven't found, I've never, I've never actually been requested to implement a feature that I could not find a plugin to do. Now, I have gone down the road of thinking, well, wow, okay, I'm going to go program this. And, you know, after a couple of hours of programming, I just went, oh, I totally forgot to look for a plugin. I take five minutes, I find the plugin and go, oh, man, I just wasted hours that I didn't need to. There was a plugin for it right here. Plug it in, poof, it works. It's great. Wow. Okay, yeah, mental note look for plugin first. It's the new mantra. If you need something with WordPress, the plugin's there. Just, just go find it. It's there. I promise. I haven't found one that I, you know, couldn't wasn't there for my for our purposes. But these three sites here, they really encompass everything you want. I mean, they've got every feature, anything from scrolling gorgeous pictures to, well, okay, the teeth really aren't. I would consider the gorgeous pictures. I'm, I'm gonna go for the food blog on the gorgeous part, or even the. Even the farm, I mean, that's that's at least good, solid food. Just, yeah, the teeth. It's, that's for dentists. They like that. Now, in some cases, like for instance, you know, for this website, we actually had someone who goes, well, you know, I really like that little flash swoosh. You know, I, I really want that extra bit on my website. Okay, I can integrate anything. It's called plug flash, you're done. All of this I've got multiple flash on this website. I've got all sorts of customization. I even have this in two different languages. At some point they came back and said, um, we love this so much we want you to put it in Spanish. And we want you to put it in French for our Canadian audience. And oh, by the way, we also want you to uh, have one for New Zealand. And you know, we're still trying to figure out what language they're considering that. But you know, I'm doing English by default. We'll see. So consequently, all of this is customizable. You want a different header on a different page? Hey, yeah, no problem. It's all there. You want you know, your own feature and you want it in a specific spot? You can create your own template. It, this is not about, oh, let's just download the template and that's all you can do is, is whatever this one little template tells you to do. 
Okay, I'm going to sh share this nice little secret here in a few minutes about which theme to use, and it can duplicate any template. So you are not restricted in any way, shape, or form to any specific theme that says, oh, I'm sorry, you can only do these things. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. You have complete and utter freedom to make your site look like whatever you want. You just got to know the little name of the theme. So first and foremost, when you are actually getting started is your information architecture. I, I cannot stress this enough. You need to know what you want. Do you want a photo gallery? Are you even going to have images? What pages are you really looking for? What information do you want to give to the user? And what type of information? Is it going to be video? Is it going to be podcasts? Is this going to be PDFs? Is it going to be a separate web page for every single item? How are you going to structure this? What's it going to look like? I mean, break out those flowchart tools because this is business. And if you don't know your business first, then all you're going to do is trip over the technical details. But if you know your information backwards and forwards and you know exactly what you need to get across, what's your message, how does it look, what do people click on in order to get there, oh, totally there, yeah, that's when the technical side becomes very, very easy. So now that we got the information architecture, we know exactly what we want people to click on. I want to click on the About Us page and have information of, oh, about us. I don't want to have information about cars because that's not what we do. That's not about us. So get your information there. Once that's there, then the fun part comes up. What's the logo going to look like? What's the color scheme? What kind of path do you want to take people through? You know, where I even wrote up a whole article that says, you know, where do you put the navigation bar and why should you put it there? Because that's actually a really big question for a lot of people is, well, you know, we just kind of put it there because that's what everybody else does. Well, I understand everybody else does that, but what are you looking for? What do you want to gain? What do you want people to actually click on? How is your marketing going to look if it's not in the right place? I have a whole article about that. It was really fun. I enjoyed it. But you get your information. You get your design. And at that point, wow, the technical site build, that's easy. I mean, it is so easy. It is laughable because now all you're doing is plugging the little puzzle pieces together. Oh, okay. Plug this in. Plug it this. Oh, it's right there. I know exactly what I need. Now, if you skip straight to the nuts and the bolts and you say, oh, I'm just going to build it and then I'll change it on the fly. Well, guess what? You're actually going to do the site design and you're going to do the information architecture. You're going to do it anyway but it's going to take you 10 times longer because now instead of having a plan and do implementing the plan, you're implementing, it's like building a car and then, you know, swapping out the engine while you're on I-35 going south. This is really not how you want to want to be running this site because you're opening yourself up to lots of issues and lots of problems and about 10 times more work. But if you just kind of follow this little plan right up front, Oh, life's so much easier. So let's actually get into this process flow. Now, this is the technical bit. It's not real technical. I don't want to scare anybody off and you know throw a bunch of buzzwords at you. But your prep really makes a difference. You got to prep for your site. Your site. You install it, and then all the goodies come later. You still got to do your prep steps because if you miss those, just like your information architecture you're going to have twice as much time going back to the prep later. First step on the prep, Gmail. And if you are not familiar with Google, I will have to ask what rock you are hiding under. Because Google is huge and they offer so much for free that they truly are mainstream. And they have so many abilities that it's, it's hard not to use them simply because they offer the best price, you know, free being the best price. Gmail. I use this. I have about 16 different sites. They all have a separate email. You, you see, I've got Toff at Open Source Marketer that you'll see on my Open Source Marketer site. Well, I've got Smart Energy Ideas, and I have a Toff at Open Source Marketer. 
toff at smart energy ideas, a toff at act like a kid, toff at WP go to guy. I have a toff address at all of these places and they all point back to my Gmail address. So when I check my email, I'm really checking my Gmail and I'm checking all 16 of them on my one Gmail account. And by the way, if you email me from Open Source Marketer and I hit the reply button on my Gmail account, it replies as Toff at Open Source Marketer. If you email me from Toff at Smart Energy Ideas, it replies as Toff at Smart Energy Ideas. It has the intelligence to combine all of this into one central location place. And to my knowledge, I've never heard of anybody actually tell me that Gmail went down. Oh wow, the server went down. I, <laughs> I haven't heard of it. So consequently, yeah, yeah, Gmail is very, very valuable and that is a stepping stone to a lot of the things we're going to do later. So put that in your back pocket. Next up is going to be purchasing your domain name. Now, Network Solutions is a big dog on the block and they've been there from the beginning. GoDaddy, much cheaper dog on the block. Um, I do not keep my domain name and my site hosting in the same place. If I buy the name at GoDaddy, I will not host that domain at GoDaddy, period. It is a simple matter of keeping things separate. You do what you do and you do not necessarily mix and match because just like WordPress where everything's a plug-in, I want everything I have to be able to plug together, but if there's ever an issue that I can unplug, pack up, and move totally and have absolutely no downtime, no issues, everybody still plays together. I mean, I know this from the, the, the sad old days of e-commerce where you had to have you know your site, your shopping cart, your e-commerce little get together package. Then you had to have your gateway, your processor, your merchant account, and the bank that had to work with them. You had like about seven different steps to go from A to Z. I mean, it was it was bad. It was really bad. And if any one of those blocks along the way didn't like another block, you were completely screwed and have to start from scratch. Well, by keeping things separate, not an issue anymore. You have totally set yourself up for insurance later in life where all of a sudden you don't like GoDaddy anymore and you want to switch to network solutions or vice versa or some other third party. Okay, if you're hosting and your name's there, yeah, it's pulling teeth to move. But if your website is over on HostGator or some other system, yeah, move the site and you know, move the name and repoint and that's it. You're done. Poof. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. No problems, no issues. It is the way to go. If you are currently hosting your domain name and your whole website at the same place, I would urge you to essentially at first convenient opportunity separate those because that will prevent a headache later in life. I've had to transfer way too many of these and had way too many issues to want to do it again. So please, please save yourself a headache. Separate those. You want to set up an email for the actual site you're building. Because let's say you bought the name of GoDaddy and then you hosted it at HostGator. Uh, threewidgets.com. Let's, let's use that one. I like that one. Threewidgets.com. So let's say we buy threewidgets.com at GoDaddy and then we go to HostGator and we set up an account for threewidgets.com and then we point our name from GoDaddy to our hosting company. And that's where we're going to have our site. Well, you need to have an email address for that site, toff at threewidgets.com, and point it back to Gmail. All this becomes clear here soon because now I can have multiple sites and Gmail's handling all of it. But more importantly, since this is a business website, I want to make sure that when I reply to you from my business, it doesn't say at AOL.com. Yes, I've gotten those emails. This is a professional business that's been around for several years, and instead of getting an email from their business, I get it from their AOL account. That's not real professional. Okay, with HostGator, yeah, email's free, it's unlimited. So there is no issue about, well, it costs more. No, 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 it costs the same. I mean, it comes with the hosting, it's all there. So there is absolutely no extra cost, and there's just a fraction of a few seconds to set up the email. Toff at open source marketer, save, redirect to Gmail, Toof, we're good.
Ta-da! Now that I got my prep done, I can actually get my site going. Fantastico is, as it says, fantastic. This is a superb piece of software that's been implemented by cPanel. So when you log in to your, again, let's use HostGator as an example. You log into HostGator or HostMonster or you know, any of these, Blue, Bluehost or whomever you're using, uh, they actually have something that installs WordPress for you. I don't, I mean, this is a time saver for me. I'm a programmer. I did this by scratch. You download WordPress, you FTP it up to your server, you, you know, install the MySQL database, you, you plug everything together, you configure it, and then you go, no, no, Fantastico does it all for you. There's this little button that says install, <laughs> install. Why, thank you very much. You did it all for me, and you did it in approximately five seconds flat. No technical skills needed, a button. I, I can't tell you how much time that one little button has saved me. It doesn't set it, it's not like building it from scratch is going to build it better. I mean, I'm a programmer. I've done it both ways many, many, many times. There is no advantage one way or the other. So why am I spending extra time building it from scratch? Oh yeah, no, I'm a programmer. I'm going to use the button. Boop, installed. Awesomeness. Okay, so now we actually have WordPress installed. We have 3widgets.com. We have it hosted on HostGator. We got an email, Tofid, 3widgets.com. And we have our WordPress now installed by Fast Fantastico. Sweet. Okay, but it looks like default WordPress. We don't want default WordPress. We never want default anything. We want it to look like our business. And we've already done the information architecture. We've already done the design. So now we need to make our site look like our design. And this is the super secret squirrel secret for the evening. There is a theme called Atahualpa. Atahualpa is the name of the last Incan emperor, which is actually kind of cool. It makes it a little bit easier to, to remember. And you can actually go to WordPress plugins and, or themes and type in ATA and hit the search. It's the only one with the ATA. So if you don't want to figure out how to spell that, because Charles never does, he types in ATA and presses the search button. I actually type it in just because you know I'm proud I've actually figured out how to spell it finally. But this theme alone allows you to mimic any other theme. If I want it two column, then I click on the extra sidebar. If I want it three column, if I want it four column, if I want it to be you know hard coded uh, 960 pixels wide, or I want it to be 99 percent. Not a problem. This is these are check boxes. If I want the banners to be blue, green, or if I want to type in the hexadecimal co color code that my designer gave me, I can do any of these. They even have a color wheel. You click on the little drop down and it says, "Okay, just choose, you know, click on the little color and we'll put it there." And then it tells you the hexadecimal so you can copy that and paste it anywhere else you want to. So it's again, it's doing the heavy lifting for you. At a Hualpa, allows me to take anything else and make it look like I want it to. And that freedom to say, okay, I want it to look like this, just go. My wife's a graphic designer, so she'll design something and say, hey, make it look like this. Oof, okay, hang on, let me look at that. Oh, yeah, okay, no problem. Click, 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 click. We're good. And I got to do it in a GUI interface. I, I didn't actually have to you know, go in and hard code anything. I just, these are drop downs and check boxes. But Atahualpa, if you, if you take nothing else away from this, Atahualpa, it is free. Yes, you can spend lots of money on themes. There are quite a few people who make lots of money selling themes. They are not as good as Atahualpa, and Atahualpa is free. So, secret squirrel tip for the evening, save yourself some money. Try Atahualpa first. If you don't like it, what did you lose? Uh, no money. Yay! <laughs> you can always go back and pay lots of money to somebody else. But Atahualpa is is really been impressive to me. Okay, so we got it prep done. We've installed WordPress, and now we've got it themed. Great, but now we need to know who's looking at it because this is a business, 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 business. We need to know and track who's touching this, and that, my friends, is FeedBurner and Google Analytics. Now, remember that Gmail account we signed up for? This is where it comes in handy because Gmail is the key to getting your FeedBurner account, which is a Google service, Google Analytics. Funny how that's a Google service. It's Google Analytics. All of those can essentially 
key off of the exact same account. So you set the account up in the prep and then you use that account and you access your feed burner and your Google Analytics. Feed burner is uh, for those who have not had fun with the blog yet. Blogs allow you to do something called RSS. It's called real simple syndication. Hey Charles, why don't you type that into chat? So RSS. RSS takes whatever you type in as your blog posts and it will spread it out to the etherverse. Oh, I like that. I'm going to have to yeah, copyright that. Etherverse. I kid, I kid you. I just came up with that. I love it. Etherverse. Essentially, people can read your blog without ever going to your website. Well, that is awesome. You are giving the information to them the way they want to have it. Okay, well, there's a problem with that. I don't know if they're reading or not. So what you do is you get the feed burner account and when people want to sign up for your RSS feed, you give them your feed burner account and that feed burner account will track who's coming and reading things on your website. I'm sorry, it will come and track who's actually reading stuff from your website. If you want people to actually track, if you want to track people who actually come to the website, oh, that's the good old Google, Google Analytics. Google Analytics is by far the mainstream tool that is used to track who's hitting your site. How many visits? How many page hits? Uh, where are they coming from? What browser are they using? Uh, when, you know, what time frame? What, you know, all this good analytic behavior that says what pages are they hitting? Oh, geez, nobody ever hits this page. Why don't they hit this page? Well, uh, at some point, you're going to go past this in analytics and you're going to start looking at it to see what is the behavior of my audience. And that is how you're going to make it work better for you tomorrow. So all that's set up. It's installed. It's ready to go. What's the first thing we do? We back it up. Oh, please back it up. Because, and you know, force majeure, a tornado is going to come through pick up your entire data center, servers, backup, utility, generators and all, and move it two states away. Why? Because it can. Okay, well that's a uh, force of nature. I, you know, anybody can plan on something like that. So these things help. Please back up what you have. And I don't say, I'm not worried about backing up WordPress. I'm not worried about backing up, you know, the installation Okay, all of that is not what has the value. The the value is your conversation. All of those comments, all of those blog posts, all of that information that you put into WordPress. You can rebuild WordPress. You can rebuild the theme. You can rehost in ten minutes flat. I mean, this is this is the easy part. You can't get all the information back, not unless you back it up. There are multiple backup ways to back up WordPress. So pick one, please, whether that's WP Backup, whether that's S3 Amazon, whether that's, I mean, there's, there's about 20 different ones. Back it up. Now we get to move on to some of the lighter things, such as redirection, because this is business. We want to do campaigns. We want to send people to the website. Well, I don't want to necessarily send people to the same page. I want to send them, let's say, uh, give you a good example. I have a client who actually sent out a snail mail mailer. This snail mail mailer was one went to Austin, one went to Houston, one went to San Antonio. But he wanted to track who read and who went, went where. Well, he's sending everybody to the same page. So Google Analytics is going, oh, hey, look at all the people who are hitting the page. Well, I want to know how successful my little mailer is. So I get this nice little uh, plugin called redirection. Redirection allows me to say uh, opensourcemarketer.com slash skydiving and I can now take that little link just like Bitly or Owly or any of those other URL shorteners I now have the ability to type in whatever I want to. I can do X21 and then I can point that to any of my pages I want. I can even point it somewhere else if I want to. So now I can have an opensourcemarketer.com slash Austin, opensourcemarketer.com slash you know, Houston, opensourcemarketer.com slash San Antonio. I can have all of these things. And when someone actually clicks or types that in, it takes all three to the same page. 
And so, oh, thank you for putting this skydiving link in there. I, I was just using it as a reference point, but it was cool anyway. That was one of those things that didn't actually have to stay in Vegas. I enjoyed the skydiving. But the whole concept is I didn't have to put in the full title. Technically, the title for that is skydiving was it skydiving in Las Vegas or it's like eight word. I mean, it was just this horrible long title I put in there. Okay, I didn't want to send people to this horrible long title. I just want to send them to skydiving and then have that redirect to the post I want them to be able to read. So they don't have to remember this horrible long you know, title with dashes in between. All they have to remember is skydiving and type in skydiving and they're done. It really makes campaigns easy. It makes sending people to a specific place easy. Let's say you want to change your landing page every two days. Well, if you send people to you know, slash landing page, you can redirect that to a different page every single day of the week because all you're doing is redirecting them. It's a neat little feature and we have found it to be invaluable. Oh, C forms. I just I drool when I think of C forms. Everybody needs to have a contact form on their site. And it took me a very long time to find a contact form that gave me the flexibility to go anywhere between name and address, thank you very much, or a four page doctor office information secured that automatically gets sent to the secretary. So when you walk into the door at a doctor's office, you can say, hey, did you get the uh, you know four-page form I filled out online on your web page? Oh, yeah, it's right here. I just printed it. Here you go. Cool. Now I don't have to get like these little pincer fingers after writing for you know half an hour and you go, oh, geez, my finger. I can't. I don't, want, I don't want to touch a pen anymore. Just go away. Go away. Forget about my office visit. I just spent all my time writing out all this paperwork. Well, I type faster and better than I could ever write. So I would much rather type it in on a form, four pages, and hit the submit button and be done. Wow, C Forms gives me that option. Oh, by the way, it's free. Free. If I can stress that, kind of like at a whole, but it's free. There are some contact forms that you can pay for. Why? <laughs> go for the free option first. See if it meets your needs. And if life is good, hey, go for the green. We're good. We've got uh, webinars where we do absolutely nothing but talk about different plugins that can enhance your site. But almost all of that depends upon what do you really want to do with your site. Remember that information architecture back on the whole business plan. What do you really want to accomplish? There are 12 thousand plugins that you can add on to your site to do whatever it is you want to do but you got to know what you want to do and that is the key to the successful business now I know we got questions because I kind of ran through this information really really fast and it looks like it is nine zero oh, it's nine o'clock even so I will not hold anything against you if you suddenly have to go put kids to bed or let a dog out who's cringing at the door it's, it's okay it's recorded we have it but I definitely want to make sure we answer some questions um, yeah Charles what you got yeah we definitely want to uh, to answer some questions I know we had some uh, people on the chat, and I've been furiously typing away, putting in resources as we've gone, gone along. So if you have a question right now, go ahead and put it into the chat. Uh, we're going to basically go read off some of these pre-registration questions that we have had here. So if you if you have something, uh, go over to right now to opensourcemarketer.com slash chat, and uh, just go ahead and put your question in, and we'll try to answer it as we go along. So let me see here. Let me Give me a second here. Let me pull up the pre-registration questions that we had. Um, one person asked, they said they, they want to start a web design company, and they, they really said it more as a statement, more than a question. So uh, so let's just turn that into a question and, and kind of give it a spin on how they could use WordPress to do that. Do you have any thoughts on that, Tom? Oh, absolutely. As I said before, my wife is a graphic designer, so I just for the past 14 years, she'll say, here's my design. Can you translate this to the web? And I coded all of this by hand from scratch. And in some cases, it was extremely painful to you know make it fit just right. WordPress has taken the technical side of it and simplified it just 
an incredible amount. So just as you saw my little process of you know, information architecture, design, and site build, well, for a web design firm, if you can provide the design ability, which you know, obviously you have to be able to draw, or Photoshop, or you know, at least have some sort of color scheme ability, which you know, is not me, that's my wife. If you can take that design and translate it into a site that does everything the user wants, aka WordPress plus plugins, you have just increased the value of your business by 100%. Not only can you make it look good, you can give them all of the features you need and this is simply WordPress and Atahualpa because it plus the plugins. I mean, you literally you have a business in a box right then and there between the WordPress design and the WordPress. I mean, I can't help you on the design. If if you're colorblind, yeah, it's, that's a tough one to get past when you're a designer. But the whole idea is if you can have the design and the color schemes and all of that good artwork, and you translate it to WordPress and Atahualpa, it's a business in a box. It really simplifies the process to the point where you don't necessarily have to have a college degree in computer science in order to make this work on the web because your customer is going to come to you and say, here's my business. Oh, okay, well, here's the design that can go against your information architecture. As a matter of fact, if you can help them with the information architecture of Here's how you focus on the information your business is interested in. Here's how you, I mean, we're actually going to walk through all of these steps for the winemaking. You know, here's the information we want to focus on. Here is how we build the site. Here's the design of, you know, what we want to focus on, what we're going to, you know, I don't know, maybe design for Merlot and a design for Chardonnay or whatever. I, it's not a clue yet, but at some point, I got to hit design. I got to hit information architecture, and then I got to do the build, and then I got to do the marketing. Well, if you can cover the design and you can cover the building with WordPress and Atahualpa, wow. I mean, that right there is a extremely sellable item. So if you really want a web design business, that is probably the simplest, easiest, cheapest, and fastest way to get a really nice business going. Yeah, and also, I mean, the, the web with, with WordPress, it's, it's uh, so e simple, so easy to set up that it makes projects go really, really fast. Uh, I mean, if someone asked us to build something from scratch, from absolute ground zero, it would cost them too much. Uh, it would just cost them uh, an exorbitant amount of money. And uh, but we can take and put the same thing up for a fraction of the cost, and we can do it extremely quickly. You know, we can do that. Oh, when we were programmers at oh, DoD man. Contractor, the project minimum project for anything on the web was nine weeks. Yeah. Period, and that's full time. Right, forty hours a week. Yeah. So. Oh yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's just putting putting something together by hand is not uh, practical anymore. WordPress allows you to be able to do that, and so you can go out and do this for clients, uh, put together websites for clients, and and be able to do that, you know, fairly efficient efficiently, and not have to have a, a huge background in in web development. So uh, definitely a definitely a tool for that. Uh, so the next question that we have here, let's see here, is the, the networkhelpdesk.com asks, is WordPress the tool for us? And I would have to say, I would have to say absolutely. I'm looking at their, their site, and I, I would say that WordPress is definitely a benefit. WordPress kind of works in a couple of different ways. It's got um, a web, think of it as website pages, and then blog posts. So on your website pages, you can create static pages just like you've got your about page and your contact page and your site map and things like that. You can create those static pages that kind of tell people what you're about, what your company does, what your background is, how they can contact you, all those types of things that are, are, are not all that sexy but are definitely the things that are essential for you know, people to know. Uh, and then you can have blog posts. And those blog posts are just like updates. You know, they're, they're updates, events that you're going to be at. Um, specials that you're running, uh, you know, bits of information that you want to communicate to your audience, things like that. And that's kind of the, it's almost like a built-in marketing tool. It's almost like having press releases built right into your site. And uh, Google loves, absolutely loves brand new content. It loves to find things 
that it can try to serve up, offer up to people and, and wrap ads around. So, uh, so being able to update on a regular basis is something that, that uh, is, is to your benefit because it's going to help attract people to you and help you get more business off of your site as opposed to just having a static site that's out there that nobody, you know, nobody knows about and you, you're kind of embarrassed to show people. Uh, you know, WordPress is one of those things where it just it it lends itself to being a very flexible tool for putting the site together. So it also helps you maintain. I see that you've got like a .NET. You're running a, a an ASPX, a .NET um, system right now, and it it uh, you know it, uh, we I've done .NET programming before, and I can tell you it's it's a whole lot better than it used to be, but it takes a lot of specialized knowledge in order to really harness the power of that platform and WordPress is not like that at all. WordPress is a upload, click uh, activate and you can install brand new features to your website without having to know any sort of programming and um, so if, if you're looking for something like that where you can offer a good quality site to people, publish information on a regular basis, even have maybe a, a customer area or a members area where they can get in and get access to information uh, privately then WordPress is definitely the tool for that. All right, well, uh, if there aren't any more questions, then I think we need to head out of here. We are about 30 minutes past the hour, and uh, so we're going to leave it there. So we want to thank everyone for being on the webinar tonight. We want to thank everybody who submitted questions, who came to the forums and lurked. Uh, just as a reminder, I will be sending out an, an email to everyone with a link to the replay of the webinar. So all those resources that we threw into the chat, if you missed those tonight, there will be links on the page. Uh, where the webinar replay will be uh, hosted, you can click on those links and you can go off and visit those resources then. So thank you for being on the call to, with us tonight. Thank you for spending some time with us, and we hope you have a good night.